so blessed and privileged just to be able to be here today. Counting yet another blessing to be able to be in the house of the Lord. God is bountiful and blessed.
to people. Amen. Amen. And what we learn is you got to be careful of who you hang around. Amen. Amen. And I heard someone just announce we need to pray for our children that are fixing to go back to school. Yeah, we need to pray for them. Because now the virus has mutated and become strong enough not only to infect them, but even to kill them. Yeah. Normally, yeah. children's immune systems are so potent because of their levels of energy that it just can't stand to stay there very long. But now, with this mutated virus, it's able to stay even longer and totally take some little children out. We can dwell on all of that and not dwell on the fact that God has gave us a means and way of defeating the virus and act like we are like the world. He hadn't made a plan for a virus. But in God's word, God can heal and cure any diseases in his word. The believers of God's word have to employ God's word. If you do not employ it, then you become the victim of what the mass media is employing to frighten you out of your wits. But we, who are the children of the Most High God, know that God has a plan. Yes, sir. As I look at the text, I realize that as we, the children of God, attempt to find our way through this maze of experience known as life, one thing we must never forget is that God has a plan. Sometimes personal misfortunes and tragedy overtake, amen, us, and circumstantial ill, winds of adversity blow, amen, sickness and disease may attack our bodies. Even death, angel, might snatch one of our loved ones from us. Our faith is sometimes shaken. Can I get a witness? Yeah. In church, we wonder why these things happen. However, in all of this maze has to offer, let us never forget that God is a God with a plan. Yeah. He has a plan for our lives, and in the text, amen, it reassures that the future of the children of God is being worked out. Many of us who are mature, who have went through some tragedies in life, have withstood some hardships in life. We know, amen, that we have an adversary. And that adversary is the devil. Now, one thing I found out about the devil is the devil cannot do any more to us than God will allow. Amen? We have to learn how to call on our God. Amen. 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 I know some of you have been calling the doctor. It's all right to call the doctor. But make sure you have a phone line that connects you with God. Amen. 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 And before you make a move, please talk to God. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. But then this dramatic adventure in the life of Joseph, the son of Jacob, we see family. We see love and patience. Good and evil. Mm. Yes. Now the story of Joseph is stretched like a tapestry over the concluding amen chapters of the story and pages of the book of Genesis. Amen. Joseph was the child of Jacob, Rachel's beloved, in the eyes of his father. Now one needs to remember that although the story of Joseph is as colorful as his coat of many colors, one need to remember that the theme of Genesis is God. Okay, how you look at this story about the plan that God has for Joseph, 
It's about God. Amen. Amen. What God is, what God requires, and ultimately how God acts in human history. From the creation of man on the banks of the cosmic energy to the fall of man in Eden, the theme of Genesis is God. From the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah to the hesitation of Lot's wife and Turner. From Noah's ark to the Tower of Babel, amen, the theme is still God. From Abraham's departure from home without a road map until the mount, the mount, amen, to laying Isaac on an altar on one of the mounts of Moriah, the theme is still God. And when we look at the text, we ought to see God at work in the lives of those whom are called according to his purpose. Yes, some of us have been called. And many, amen, have been called, but few are chosen. This story of Joseph is the fact that God chose him, amen, out of all of his brothers to be 12, to be exact. He's the one that God designated, amen. One thing I know about God, when God calls someone, amen, they are already qualified. Amen. God had already got him ready before his call. Yeah. Yes. Amen. And the question of his design was to deal with the question of evil in the world. The question raised is, what do you do when the forces of evil are all about you? When the sinister, the wicked, the scandalous, and the devilish seem to camp at your doorstep. The story reveals that there are two alternating factors of human experience, good and evil. No one will deny the reality of evil, amen? And church, I found that there is no way to make evil any less than evil. It's hard to simply, amen, not easy to convince anyone himself that evil is simply good in the making. Church, I found whenever evil stands in the presence of goodness, there is a spiritual tug of war at work. There's a cosmic conflict, bad and good, positive and negative, clash and conflict, tension and struggle. It's simply an internal warfare between right and wrong, sin and holiness, God and Satan. Yeah, it's, it's kind of strange that we can be caught between, amen, these two superpowers, amen. One thing I found out about these particular powers, amen, Satan don't have the power that God has. And even though we're in the midst, amen, God is using Satan to get us in shape. Amen. Hey Amen. I know many of you think that the church is volunteer. Yeah, you come when you want to. You smile when you want to. You act the way you want to act. But what if I told you it, it's not that simple? What if I told you that God can make you smile? If he wants to. Yeah. God can, amen, cause you to realize that you are not your own. Right. That you've been bought with a price. Yes. God has the ability, amen. You ask Job. Yeah. A perfect and upright man that feared God and shoot evil, that God can allow Satan to be tied loose. Right. On your life. Yeah. And make your life a living hell. Amen. 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 Yeah. God can do that and allow Satan to do whatever he wants him to do. That's why I know that these superpowers, amen, one of them is supreme. And one is not. One is being used as an instrument to get us in shape. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. 
That's why you have to look at everything from the perspective. Even the coronavirus is getting us in check. As the people come back to church, guess what? They have a renewed interest. Don't they? All of us know that we are sick enough to die right now. Amen? Don't think now you're that healthy. No, you're not that healthy. But you're sick enough to die. And it's only by the grace of God that is sustaining you right now. See, that's what we want our mind set to be at. That is God's grace and His mercy. It's not that we've been so good or that a man uh, we deserve time. God is giving us time. Because time belongs to God. Oh yes. Amen. Yes, there is a way to handle the evil that confronts the children of God. Amen. Within the text, one finds that Joseph was hated by his brothers. What a what a life to live. Despite the cause of his dreams, even the presence of his coat of many colors caused his brothers to burn in hot jealousy and hatred. Amen. Isn't it strange? Even in Joseph's days, that brothers, a man can be jealous of other brothers. Amen. That brothers can hate other brothers simply because a man sibling rivalry. Right. The father loved one more than the other. But you would have to know the story to know why. Yeah. See, Joseph was born by Rachel, yeah. the woman that Amen, <laughs> his dad worked for yeah. almost 21 years. Yeah. You gotta understand this. Yeah. And he was given some more women, and they had children by him, but he only had two children by Rachel. Yeah. And that was Joseph and Benjamin. Oh yeah. So when when Joseph was born after all of those years, in his old age, yeah. he fell in love with Joseph. Yeah. And the Bible speaks that he loved him more. Yeah. Now some of y'all couldn't have that. Yeah. Some of you children that think that mom and dad loved somebody else yeah. more. Then they love you. Amen. How dare you even think the thought that somebody loves somebody else more. See, some of us need more attention than others. Amen. Amen. It takes more, amen, for mothers and fathers to get certain children to point B than it does for every child. Amen. You can't just, amen, look at all of them the same. Right. Because they're not the same. Amen. And you're not the same. Amen. 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 Even in this church, we're different. Amen. 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 You notice when you got up this morning, all of y'all are not color, color coordinated. <laughs> you didn't all wear the same color. That means you're different. Amen. You looked in your wardrobe, you saw a color you like or what fit you better. And that's what you put on. Amen? Yeah. Amen. You didn't call around and check and see if everybody was wearing green or blue. I ain't gonna say green. <laughs> Amen. But these brothers stripped mm, off his coat. Amen. After he went looking for them and smeared ghost blood upon it and cast him into a pit to die. In a stroke of characteristic generosity, a man, a caravan came by and they sold him for 20 pieces of silver to a band of Ishmaelites. And he was doomed to a life of slavery in Egypt. Now, psychoanalysts would say that this was a dysfunctional family. 
And I submit to you all this day that even though we are not lining up to God's requirements, like we should, my brothers and sisters, it doesn't alter the fact that God still has a plan. See, when you look at the church and say, well, the church ain't all that it should be. It's not all that it should be, not because of God. It's because of us. Our slowfulness. Our, our drag and laziness. Amen. We know we should be at Sunday school, but we are. Y'all say amen. 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 They don't want to say it, I know, because they're not here. Amen. Amen. We know we should be in Bible study, but we don't come. Amen. 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 That's a midweek service. Amen. Now, don't get mad at me. I know you will, but I can have you. Amen. Because I'm going to pray for you. You understand? I ain't going to get mad at you. I'm going to just pray for you. You don't want us to say it from the pulpit. You intimidate weak preachers and they don't say it. Then you, you want us to be faster than fast. Amen. As fast as a moving locomotive. Able to bend raw steel. Y'all want us to be supermen in the pulpit. But that ain't what God called us to be. He called us to be proclaimers of the word of God. And so we have to let you know, amen, when you're not lining up with God's word like you're supposed to. But one thing about, I got to let you know, whenever we're preaching the word of God, it doesn't just cut one way. It cut both ways. So if I say, you, if you don't go to Sunday School of Bible study, it's not that I'm jealous because you're not coming. Amen. I got to make sure to motivate me to keep coming. I got to make sure to make sure that I keep going to Bible study and to Sunday school. I got to motivate and encourage me to make sure that I'm about my father's business. But I still have to recognize the fact that I have to let you know as well. Amen. 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 So don't get it. Don't get stuck on stupid with Amen. We're trying to make sure we all can get to help. Amen. Because we don't function very well when we don't, we're not on the same page. Amen. Amen. Most of the time, the reason why we're not on the same page is we're not studying the same lesson. Amen. We're not in the same book. Yeah. Your teacher, amen, if you go to class and you got some of your students on one page and got the others on another page, amen, if you ask your students what's on the page that the other students are on, they might not know. Amen. Amen. So what has to happen is, the only way you can derive oneness in a church, we have to be on the same page. Amen. And many times we're not on the same page, amen, because we don't go to Sunday school together, and we don't go to Bible study together, so we might not be on the same page. And whenever a preacher preaches, amen, you might not even know what he's talking about. If he's talking about, amen, being patient, amen, in faith. Amen. And he wants us to understand that. See, we were dealing with something this morning about the coronavirus and how that, amen, was telling us not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together as the custom of some are. He was talking about, amen, when trouble comes to the church, when a coronavirus invades our ranks. Instead of us running from the church, we're supposed to make sure we stay in the church. And not only that we're supposed to stay in the church, we're supposed to make sure we do what we're supposed to do, and that is come together and pray. And then as we pray and talk to God, we look for God to intervene in our behalf. Because if we start running as some have, amen, we're going to find out it does not help the situation, it escalates the situation, and then we don't have the resolve to be able to bring the church together so that we can call on the forces that be to be able to rectify the dilemma. Yeah. But you got you to gotta be on the same page. Somebody has to know 
That's why we go to Sunday school and Bible study. It was at Bible study that we made the decision to continue to have church with us. It was at Bible study that we said we knew people were going to leave and we weren't going to hinder people who were afraid to leave. Amen? We weren't going to hinder them. We ain't down on nobody. Amen? But the people that could and wanted to continue to go to church, we asked that you would come. Amen. Amen. Amen? That's what it's about. Now, Corona ain't going nowhere, right? Now, we already have been through this once, right? right? Amen. So we ought to know now that leaving church is not the solution. Amen. What we need to do now, let's try this way. Let's come and be more frequent with coming and let's start going down in prayer. Amen. Let's watch God. Let us stop being so weak and fragile that we start running here and there, giving our opinions about this and that. Let's go to God's word. Yeah. And he tells us no weapon formed against us shall prophet. And he tells us that he can hold us in the hollows of his hand and the devil in hell can't plug us out. Amen. There's a difference in going here than going to a school where some governor done said, that they're not going to have mass mandates saying that the kids can go and not have to have a mask on and you're going to go there and teach somebody. But the thing's going to get in your air conditioning system. Amen? And if it's in the air, it don't have to go up your nose. It can go in your eyes. It's something to think about. As a church family, we got to get real with God. When you're dealing with something like this, we need to make sure we use every weapon at our disposal. And God has a weapon. Now Joseph has a simple problem. He's hated by his brothers. Amen? And, and, and he's dealing with the fact that he don't understand everything that he's dealing with. But God knows that there's something in Joseph. There's something about Joseph to realize that Joseph would never quit on God. I don't care what he go through. He still persevered. He still believes that God has a plan. Oh yeah? Oh, that, the scripture that I read for your listening pleasure lets you know that he knew that God had a plan. See, the problem we have is when people don't understand that God has a plan. You are not born by haphazard. It was your father and mother that planned that you were going to be born and already had your name, amen. Sometimes like the Indians, amen. When you were born, the Indians, they look out the window and see an antelope or a deer and they would say, his name, Dear Ronnie. <laughs> Amen. It wasn't, it wasn't that they planned it. It was the fact that the providential will of God blessed that you would be born. Amen. And if you were born and you're living now, it's God's providential will for you to continue to live. You know that? Out of three quarters of a million people who have died, why did you not die? I have to ask myself Amen. why did I not die well God got a plan and I got to make sure that I realize I'm in his plan I can look around and who died and talk about whoa they died I can't stop that I can't control that but then I have to look at me and say God Thank you for keeping me. Some of us are too busy wondering about, no, 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 I got to say thank you. I got to start getting, I got to get hyped about what God is doing for me. I can't just go around with doom and gloom all the time, looking like I don't know what to do. I, I know what to do. I need to be praising God. I need to be thanking God. I need to be encouraging other folk. I need to be an example for somebody. I need to let my light shine before men that they may see God's good works and glorify 
about the Father in heaven. I got to be about my Father's business. I can't just sit around and act like I'm a bump on the law. Amen. God's been too good, hasn't he? We sit in air conditioning environment on Christian pews. Amen. There are people that's dying right now. Amen. People on respirators. People. Amen. Struggling for their lives. Yeah. But they really need something you got. Yeah. And you might not even know you got it. Yeah. A relationship with a God. Yeah. A relationship with a God. Yeah. A relationship with a God. Yeah. See, you have a personal Savior. Yeah. And He loves you. And you know He loves you. Yeah. See, you don't give up when you know you got a God on your side. Yeah. Amen. You shake off. Yeah. Amen. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Frustration. Yeah. You have to look. Amen. And that's what I think Joseph was doing. He was shaking some stuff off. Yeah. When they took him out of the pit and took him to Potiphar's house, he was shaking some stuff off. Yeah. When he got down there and Miss Potiphar wanted to make love to him, he had to shake it off. Yeah. He shook off his coat. He ran. And, and he made his way, but he still lied on him. They put him in prison, amen. He stayed there several years, but he had to shake it off. Yeah. See, even though he was down there, God knew he was there. God had him there for times such as what they were going to go through. And when, amen, Pharaoh started having visions and dreams that he could not comprehend, amen, God had already prepared the person to be there just for him. Yeah. See, that's what I'm trying to tell somebody today. God has a plan. You can shortchange yourself, but don't shortchange God. Amen. God know what you can do. God know what you're thinking before you thought it. Amen. Don't shortchange yourself. God got blessings with your name on it. Yeah. Since I, I heard that song, that God had a blessing with my name on I've been trying to get my blessing. Amen. Y'all don't understand. Amen. I've been trying to get my blessings. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And every time he blesses me, I'm going to tell you something, Mama Rock. Thurman, I'm going to tell you. You ain't got to worry about me and what I'm going to do with my 10%. Amen. I'm bringing it right to the church, and I don't care if it's. $800,000. You'll get it. Amen? amen. Pastor Kenneth loves us to be able to administer it. Amen? Because I already know what God is going to do. Yeah. See, you can't beat God giving. Amen. The more you give, the more God will. Yes, sir. And if you just continue to be a blessing, amen, God will open a wonder, yes, not one doors. Yeah. A wonder. Yeah. Amen? See, all of us, amen, want money. Yeah. Amen? But then a lot of us don't know how to get it. Yeah. Some of us have been tricking folks, scheming, yeah. holding back, yes, all kinds of stuff. We'll rob God of all people to rob. Yeah. Amen? Yes, Man, and I'm going to tell you something. When you rob God, you rob you. Yeah. That's how complex this thing is. Oh, yeah. When you rob God, you're robbing you. How, how, how can you? <laughs> Man, when I, when I think about this thing, I say, Lord, and I didn't understand it. I'm being honest with y'all. I didn't understand what I understand now. Yeah. You know, somebody said, well, Reverend, how can you give them Negroes that much money? They don't give you that much money. I said, ain't what they give me. I said, man, you lose it. You listen. It's what God gives you. Yeah. Amen. Ain't that what it's all about? Yeah. See, some of us are being blessed. And we're we, we dealing with coronavirus. We're dealing with, amen, uh, economic depravity. We're dealing with all kinds of situations. But some of us are being blessed bountifully right in front of all your folks' eyes. They don't understand how you get what you get. But, amen, God is opening the door. Yeah. Oh, man. You ain't thinking about dying. Yeah. You're thinking about living. Amen. You're thinking about giving. Yeah. Yeah, but see, the more I give, yeah. the more I'm going to receive. Yeah. Hey, man, you reap what you sow. Yeah. And you receive more 
of what's in soul. Yeah. You, you got to see what's going on out here. And you, you can be slow now. You can, you can be a little slow. You look at your money, you look at folk, and you can say, if I give my money out, I'll be broke. If I keep my money in my pocket, I'll always have some. That's the I don't know whatever decision you are deciding to make. But I found out if you can just turn loose some of that filthy lucre. That's what I'm going to tell you what it is. And then watch God. Have y'all ever tried God? I, I tried it, but I got here to try. Yeah, I tried it. And I'm telling you, I have been better off. Amen. Since I tried God. And God just keeps on blessing me. Look at God's plan. Amen. But he was all around. No misfortune, no bad luck, but he, and through it all, somehow God raised him up out of a horrible pit. That's what our devotional reading said this morning. Raised him out of slavery, out of jail. God raised him out of neglect and abuse. But God raised him to a position of power in a time of famine. See, his brothers, the ones that thought they had threw him down, didn't realize when they threw him, they threw him right where God wanted him to be. Yeah. See, sometimes people, amen, when they try to throw you down, yeah. they threw you up. Yeah. Amen. And sometimes you don't realize that they threw you up. You want to fight back. But, but I found out in life that if you land where they threw you, amen, and continue to do and trust God, you're going to find out God has a way of elevating you while they were still sitting there dwelling on the fact of the evil that they done. This boy was being elevated yeah. by God. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. If his brothers would have elevated him, they could have brought him back down. Yeah. But if God elevates you, you don't even have to worry about folk bringing you down. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. In the midst of a family, God took Joseph over welfare. Yeah. Then he allowed him to be over the collection and distribution put him in charge of the grocery store, made him secretary of agriculture. Amen. And the Bible is right in it. Romans 8 and 20, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. This boy was called according to God's purpose. Some of you are trying to figure it out, trying to get ahead, trying to do things your way. You just, you, you, it's futile. Do it God's way. Yeah. yeah, thank God for the example. When faced with evildoers in his life, Joseph said to them, fear not. And that's what the lesson started. Fear not. See, I'm not the one. That's what he was telling you. You need to worry about it. The reason Job was able to say fear not, because he understood the plan of God. That's what he told him, wasn't it? He said, you didn't put me here. He said, Joseph said, I'm just brethren, come near to me. I pray you. And they came near and said, I'm Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourself that ye sold me there. But God did send me before you to preserve life. He said, I had a mission. Ain't that something? He ain't dwelling on what they did to him. He's focused on the plan of God. Now I'm going to tell y'all something. We better make sure that we're focused. 
Yes, sir. Not on what people have done to you. But stay focused on the plan of God. I hear too many grown folk talk about what people have done to me. Oh, they done this to me. Oh, they done that to me. That's why I don't trust this. Uh, Y'all got a problem. Do you believe in God? Has God been good to you? Then why aren't you focusing on God? Why would you focus on somebody that's negative anyway? Focus on somebody that's blessing you. Somebody that keeps on blessing you. Sometimes people like to talk about negativity. Amen. But I like to talk about a God who saved a wretch like me. That's what I like to talk about. I like to talk about a God who looked beyond my fault and saw my every need. Yes, I like to talk about a God who's able to keep me from fault. I like to talk about a God that one day when I was a rich under, he saw my miserable plot and he came and lifted me. He said, I'm not your judge, I'm not the one that will divide the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the tail. Then he said, you've got to trust God. That, that's what Joseph told his brother. He said, that's what I learned to do. I learned to trust God. When you threw me out and I was in the band of Israelites, I learned to trust God. When part of my wife lied on me, I had to run for my life. I learned to trust God. When I was in prison, hey man, and didn't see my way out, I learned to trust God. Each one of you in here are going to have to learn how to trust God. You used to look at me and I look at you, but what have you experienced? What have you went through? Amen. You should have already developed some ability to trust God. Because God has made your path clear by now. He's already opened some doors for you. He's already, amen, closed some lips and mouth for you. He's already planted you in fertile ground. God has already done so much for you, even through what you struggled with. God brought you through. Yeah. 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 So why? Why are you dwelling on the negativity of folks? I'm going to tell you something. Most people that talk about me very long get tired. Because I'm not going to interact with you with your negativity. What I'm going to do is focus on Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the modern days, the recycling company will take old tin scrap metal. Haven't you seen on the Coke can with the word written recyclable? After the drink has been drunk and the can has been discarded and thrown away, a recycler will come and put it through a refining process. And when it comes out, the unusable becomes the usable. Evil that seemingly would do a child of God harm passes through God's refining station. It comes out as a blessing. Y'all don't understand how it works. Amen. Joseph said, is what you meant to be my defeat, God turned it into my victory. What you thought would be my shame, God turned it into my success. What you thought would be my downfall, God turned it into a way out of nowhere. Yes, sir. What you thought would be my stumbling block, yeah. God turned it into a stepping stone. Yeah. Joseph was and he is not the only one who knows all things will work together for good. Yeah. See, I talked to Job, and as I get ready to go, Job said, Reverend Harper, I think it just see my story. Yeah. He said I was a perfect and upright man that feared God and evil. Yeah. He said everything that I done was right. Mm -hmm. And I even had the consciousness of mind to know that my children weren't perfect. Yeah. So every day I would pray to God. I, for all of my children because 
they might have sinned against God. Yeah. Ain't God all right? Yeah, yeah. Job said, uh, but one day, mm, uh, messenger after messenger mm, uh, brought me bad news. Uh, he said, I began to blame it on the Lord, uh, but I didn't know uh, that the devil uh, was working his mischief. Amen. Uh, and that's what I stopped by to tell you on my way to glory. Uh, my arrival, uh, I want to put y'all's name there. Because I believe uh, that Satan saw uh, how you were working collectively for God. Amen. And I know what happened. Uh, God being the God uh, that loves to brag on his own. Uh, said, I don't believe uh, my Mariah will run away uh, if the coronavirus gets out. Hey, God, all right. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, he told the devil, uh, you can let him loose. Uh, hey, God, good. Uh, but I just believe uh, I got some hope down there uh, that love the Lord. Uh, hey, God, all right. Uh, I got some hope down there. Uh, that through hell uh, and high water uh, they're going to make it uh, down to the mouth uh, thank God good uh, see I thank God uh, that it wasn't just preachers that kept coming uh, it wasn't just preachers that still come uh, every one of you uh, amen uh, whether you left uh, hey, that, uh, you're still here uh, by the grace of God, uh, thank God all right. Uh, well, I stopped by the chair. Uh, the brothers looked at, uh, hey man, they looked at Joseph. Uh, they were tears in their eyes. Uh, they began to cry. Uh, hey man, Joseph uh, is already crying because uh, they're having a family uh, reunion. Uh, Ain't God good? But Joseph tells them, I gotta do something. I, I want y'all to know that I kept Benjamin back because I needed to know if you had killed Benjamin. And I found out that you didn't kill my baby brother. And I want y'all to know that I ain't gonna let daddy kill himself uh, because that's what Jacob said uh, he said if something happens uh, to Benjamin uh, I'm going to kill myself uh, he said uh, what I want you to do uh, is go down uh, and get my daddy uh, thank God alright uh, I stopped by the tell you uh, God has a plan uh, yes he does uh, and I heard the boys went down, got their daddy, brought their daddy back. All the Israelites lived in Egypt under that Pharaoh. But I stopped by to tell you, God's ultimate plan happened with Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. When I don't carry, I'm letting down. For your sins and mine He died oh, He died Oh, heaven Yes, he did The reason he died burning The reason he died Shirley, Shirley The reason he died Nina The reason he died Alabama The reason he died D.T. Was because God loved y'all so much Yes, he did. He died with your name on the Lamb Book of Life. He knew before you confess the hopes in Jesus Christ that you would cry out, I love the Lord. He heard my cry, hit in my every groan. Long as I live, my poor eyes. I believe you now, but Jesus went in a cold grave, laid there three days and three nights, 
when the Bible says, right early, right early. talked about the faith of others. Yeah. Sometimes it's the faith of others that say yeah. Yeah. They don't have to have that faith sometimes. It can be the faith of the four friends that lowered their friend down in front of Jesus. And Jesus said it's not by his faith but it's by the faith of the friends. Yeah. Amen. Mama, I be that friend that has faith today. Amen. Pray for Eddie. Amen. Eddie's getting weaker. Boy, he's a friend of mine. He was, Eddie was there with him. I was a young deacon. He was ordained with me. He's the one that encouraged me to accept my calling in ministry. I was hesitant, somewhat afraid. He reassured me, he said, you don't know what you got. He said, you need to go home. And I thank God that I listened to him. I listened to God. And I haven't missed anything. I'm telling y'all, you won't miss anything. I want y'all to make sure you stay focused. Please stay focused on God. Because what you go through now to give up sometimes. But please stay focused on God. Okay, what Sister Willie Silas told me. She said, baby, said, all I want you to do is just do what God tells you to do. And don't try to do no more than what he said. Sister Lee Robinson told me. She said, baby, I don't went blind. But I still know how to call on the name of Jesus. So I don't forget your name. Yeah. yeah. She forgot my name. But she never forgot the name of Jesus. Boy, I'm going to tell you, God is powerful. I want to encourage each of you to do your best. Pray for Pastor Kenneth Lovelace while he's on his trip. Pray for Evangelist Esther Jackson while he's 
down in Conway at New Generation. That's where he is in my heart. I want you to pray for Reverend Lee and Minister Marie Lee. Amen. They are quarantined. And amen. Because they've come in contact and Marie ended up with a touch of it. So I told her, these are my words to my niece, I said. Murder, you're so concerned about lesser people, but I don't think it's lesser people that the devil is after. I said, the devil is after somebody else. I said, I said you need to watch yourself. That was before she found out. And sure enough, when she checked, she had. So sometimes the devil will be a curveball. And you think it's somebody else. But it's really. He's looking, he's looking at somebody else. So I just want to say, we want to extend this invitation to you. We just want to thank you for your love and patience and your persistence. You keep coming to church. Amen. I said you keep coming to church. Amen. You keep coming to church. Amen. And thank you for the depths of our heart. Take care of someone else. Let them know that we are defying Satan. We're encouraging believers to love God with And that you can become stronger through the Word of God. I want to thank you from the depths of our heart.